Here is Paige Litterer. Hey guys, good morning. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, my name is Paige Litterer. I am the Director of Intern Experience here at Cafe Momentum. I run all of the non-clinical programs. And we wanted to show you the video just so you had a little bit of backstory and understand what Cafe Momentum is. And I'd like to share with you my journey on how I came to Cafe Momentum. And then most importantly, you're gonna meet the young lady that works here at Cafe Momentum. So my journey really started at 18 in the very first restaurant job that I got. It was in Richardson, Texas at a place called The Abbey. And I got hired as a server. I think my mom like knew somebody that worked there or something. But my very first day, I'm asked, hey Paige, go run this dessert over to table, you know, whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. So these desserts were cobblers served, served on metal skillets, like piping hot skillets. <laughs> and you know where I'm going. <laughs> and without even thinking, I take two spoons and I plop it on the skillet and I serve it, like, okay, enjoy. The next thing I know, my manager, Beth, is like ripping me a new one on the dining room floor in front of all the guests, all my new coworkers. I am just like mortified and thinking, this job is not for me and I'm never coming back. Tomorrow, I'm gonna call in. This is terrible. I was so embarrassed. And then the guest, you know, with his like lip hanging off because I scalded his mouth with this piping hot spoon that I put on a hot skillet. <laughs> pulls me to the side and is like, I'm so sorry, that, uh, that was terrible, that was so unprofessional of your boss to do, I really apologize that that happened, and he slips me a $20 bill. I'm like, you're telling me I just burned this guy's mouth off, he's probably going to the hospital, he just slipped me a 20? Okay, I'll stay here. <laughs> I can do this. So eventually my time ran out at the Abbey and I moved to Austin, Texas to go to St. Edwards University and I got another job in another restaurant. And it was the tavern, if anybody is a UT fan, you know that is like the place to go. It's the busiest place in Austin for games. So it was super exciting, it was a lot of fun, made great money, great relationships, lifelong friendships, it was awesome. I eventually graduate from St. Edwards. I had gone for business and graduated, did a little bit of traveling. I visited Guatemala, came back, and was still working at the tavern. And I started feeling really lost and really unfocused and really hard on myself. Like, you're supposed to have a real job. You're supposed to have a salary. You're supposed to have a 401k. There's all these things that you're supposed to be doing when you graduate from college. So I put my resume on monster.com and like that day, the first place to contact me is Ameriprise Financial, which is a financial investment company, if you've never heard of it. And I go in, I'm like, I don't know anything about this, but whatever, yeah, I'll come in for an interview. Well, I like nail it. I leave there and I'm like, wow, I'm like so good at this. And they call me the next day and offer me the job. Oh my god, salary at 401k, I have no idea what that means, and I don't really care about it, but that's what I should be doing. So I take the job, and if you know anything about me, which is some of y'all do, I hate finances, I hate budgeting, I, like, if it has a number, just leave me out of it, please, because I do not like any of that, and I failed college algebra three times. So what business did I have? going to work for a financial investment company. Whatever, it's what I was supposed to do. So I did it. About a year later, the market crashes and the layoffs start. And they go on for like six months and every time I'm like, make it through a round of layoffs and I'm like, come on, just lay me off. <laughs> Not thinking, you know, now, hindsight 2020, I could have gone and looked for another job, but you know, didn't think about that at the time. Just wanted to be laid off. So finally I get laid off and I'm so excited. <laughs> and I don't even think it crosses my mind why I'm so excited. I'm just excited because I knew I didn't like it really. So the girl at the front desk, right after I get laid off, she's like, hey, the franchise office right down the street, they're hiring. Do you want me to call over there and see if I can, you know, if you can go interview? I'm like, well, 
I mean, I guess I am unemployed, so sure, why not? So driving over there, I know that little voice in the back of my head is saying, Paige, you're just thrilled to be laid off from this company. Why are you going to apply for another position within the same company? This does not feed your soul in any way, but I didn't listen. I went anyway. I go into the interview, nail it, they hire me on the spot, and I'm like, oh, winning at life again. They were much smarter, I guess, than my previous boss, because it did not take them very long to realize that this does not feed your soul, and actually, you really suck at this job. So they fired me, rightfully so. And I'll never forget, in that interview, the guy that fired me, his name was Michael, he was actually younger than me, and he said, you know, Paige, we just really thought that you would have caught on by now. And it was the first time that I thought, you know, Paige, you really should have caught on by now. This is something you should have already, you should have this down. So you know, I pack up my box of stuff and a little fake plant, and I get in the car, and you know those moments in life that you have that you know, or actually you don't even know how you get to the next step, and it just happens. And I picked up my Blackberry, because I was like, you know, had a Blackberry at the time. And I called my dad, and I said, okay, don't freak out. I just got fired, and I'm gonna move to Guatemala and volunteer for a year. And he said, okay. Side note, my dad is really, really cool and very supportive and just, you're young, go adventure, travel, see what's out there, like you never know. And I know now he knew that I was not on my life path, that I was not doing anything that was really a passion of mine or was supporting what I would actually be good at. So it was just fate. Everything lined up. I had lived with my same roommate for seven years. She was moving to San Antonio to go live with her boyfriend. Our lease was ending. It was perfect timing. So I moved back to Dallas and moved in with my parents to save money. And I need a job. And I'm like, OK. Well, I mean, I waited tables forever. I've got these skills. You know, I was a really terrible employee at a financial investment company. so. I can't do that. I'll just go at tables again. I can suck this up for a few months and make some money and go do something totally different. So that's what I do. And I got a job at Hacienda on Henderson. And the only thing you need to know about that place is they had tequila on tap. And that was it. <laughs> so January 3rd, 2011, I am in Guatemala. And I'm starting to feel things immediately. I'm feeling that I'm in the right place, I'm feeling passionate for the first time. I had made a year-long commitment to work for an organization called Tess Unlimited, and my primary job was to work with cleft lip and palate babies. And I had always, I just loved babies, I loved hanging out with them, babysitting, you know, giving them back, of course, but I just loved being around babies. And people would always say, oh my God, isn't your job so sad? That's gotta be so hard, you're around these sick babies all the time. And all this poverty, and to me, it was lighting my insides. It was feeding everything in me that I did not even know was there, but that I wanted. And the joy that came from working with those babies was incredible, because it actually wasn't sad, it wasn't depressing. It brought so much happiness and so much hope because I could help a mother. I could provide her with the milk that she needed, the formula that she needed, special bottles to feed their babies, and I got to help coordinate their surgery and find the right surgeon to actually fix their cleft lip or their cleft palate, and know that this child will grow up functional, that they're going to be able to eat and nourish themselves, they'll be able to speak properly at some point in their life. So it, it was awesome. It meant something real. So here's where the funny part comes in. So Tessa, she's the founder of Tessa Unlimited. She also had an education center in the village that all of the volunteers lived in. And this was for the kids, kind of like a community center almost, just to keep them out of trouble after they got out of school. And they taught English classes and art classes and cooking classes and reading and computer skills. And my first weekend in Guatemala, very first weekend, she says, oh my God, Paige, like I would really love if you would help us out with kids' restaurant. 
I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? You want me to work in another restaurant. I am trying to escape the restaurant business and you keep pulling me back. So it turns out Kids Restaurant is, was incredible. It was for the upper level kids that were learning English. It was a way for them to practice English by bringing in tourists to the education center and they would set it up like a restaurant. And they did it every week. So the kids would cook the meal, they would serve, they would bus, they would do everything. They had adorable hats and little uniforms. And they also did a different country every week. So in their English classes, they would learn about whatever country it was. In their cooking classes, they were learning how to cook cuisine from that country. Which, side note, they did not do USA, they did Texas. <laughs> and we made chili. So, back in this environment, and I'm just loving it. My whole year in Guatemala made me realize I love working with youth. I love nonprofit. I strive in that chaotic environment. And this was everything that I needed in my life to wake up. So my year commitment ends, I move back to Dallas. And I'm depressed, I'm heartbroken, I'm just heart sick, I miss Guatemala, I miss the people, the culture, the food, the colors, everything. I'm just so down. So I wallow for about a month before I realize I need a job. And I know you already know where I'm going now. My best friend worked at Connie Rosso in Deep Ellum. It's a pizza place. So I got a job in another restaurant. But the culture there was incredible, it was super fun. If you've ever seen Jay's crazy Facebook posts, he's the owner, it's just super cool, chill environment. Maybe eight months in or so, I'm really starting to feel that, ugh, oh, I'm missing something. Something's, something's not happening. You know, I've just come back from Guatemala, I've really figured out that I know what I'm good at. I know what I really like, and I'm back in a restaurant again. So I go travel for a little bit. And Jay, who's the owner of Cane Rosso, him and I had had a lot of really candid conversations of just, you know, this is what I'm really interested in and passionate about. And he was always down to help his employees connect them with, you know, whatever it is that they wanted to do in life. And I had told him about kids' restaurant and just how neat that was, especially as a restaurant owner. So I'm traveling and he writes me a Facebook message and he says, hey, when you get back, you, I want to introduce you to this guy. His name is Chad Hauser. I really think he's doing something in the community that you're going to like. I'm like, okay, cool. And I, I remember that feeling. I remember sitting in that hostel thinking, hmm, okay, I, I think we're on to something good here. I don't even know this guy. I have no idea what this is, but I have a good feeling already. So I get home from my trip, and a couple months later, finally coordinate with Chad, and we meet. And if anybody has ever seen him speak, kind of like in the video, or you've met him, you know that he is really, really excited, and he talks really, really fast, and he's super passionate, and I had no idea what he was talking about, but I liked it. I heard words that I liked. He talked about juvenile offenders, and in the kitchen, and I'm thinking, juvenile offenders, like, oh my god, this is probably really scary, but I don't know, I'm gonna give it a shot. I think he's on to something and I gotta figure out what this guy is talking about. So I attend my very first pop-up dinner and that was at Driftwood in Oak Cliff. And to preface, pop-up dinners happened once a month all over the city and the kids from Dallas County Youth Village, which is a juvenile detention facility, they were given special permission to be released for about eight hours at a time, come and work the pop-up dinner and then their juvenile security officers took them back to jail that night. So I show up at this pop-up dinner and I'm immediately like, ooh, this is really cool. And I think I am starting to understand what is happening here. And the kids were so polite, they were so kind, they're like serving from the left and clearing from the right and I'm just so impressed with them. It's not what I expected at all. And at the end of the night, Chad is you know, doing his thank yous, thanking everybody for coming, and so appreciative and grateful, and I see this kid standing behind him, and he's just like so excited, and he's like tapping Chad on the shoulder, and he just wants to talk, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this little 16-year-old wants to speak, that's so sweet. Like five seconds later, I'm like, tears just like running down my face. 
crime, this kid stood up in front of a group of 80 strangers and thanked them all for coming and was so grateful for the opportunity to be there and really express the gratitude on behalf of the group. I guess he was kind of chosen as the one who really wanted to speak for everybody. I knew, like immediately, I was like, this is big. Like, these kids have guts and they're ready to do something different with their life and this is big. I need to be a part of this. So I told Chad, whatever you need, I'm there. Let's do this. Hey Paige, can you speak a little louder into the mic? Oh yeah, sorry. sorry Is anyone having hear me trouble back. hearing? Sorry. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. And if we can increase Hopefully the didn't miss anything. Can we increase the volume questions. a little bit too? I can't on this one. Oh, that's okay. But I'll talk louder. Yeah. How's that? Thanks. Okay. 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 So I told Chad, like, whatever it is you need, I'm there. I'm down for this. I want to help in any way I can. So I start volunteering. This lasts about a year and a half. Finally, I con him into hiring me at another restaurant. And the restaurant opens in January of 2016, 2015. So what I will say is I have learned a lot in my time at Cafe Momentum and working with our kids. And I think the most important takeaway for me is that I had no idea what teenagers were gonna teach me. And I thought I was being hired to teach them. I thought I was going to be giving them all the tools that they needed to succeed, not knowing that they were actually giving me all the tools that I needed to succeed. So when I was asked to speak on courage, my initial reaction was like, whoa, that is a really big topic to speak on, but okay. <laughs> I thought, Okay, I'm gonna find this perfect story about the kid that did like the most courageous thing and I'm gonna bring the whole crowd to tears. And then it dawned on me that it's not those big courageous acts of like fighting off the bear or the shark or whatever. It's the little things that happen every single day. It's the little things that we do to get us from point A to point B. And I wanna give you an example of what really impacts me every day. So our restaurant is open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It's open from 5.30 to 10. And those nights, it fills up. It fills up with people from all over Dallas, all over Texas, all over the US. And everybody has the same thing in common, is that the guests are so curious about our kids, and they're so curious why they're here. And so I watch this all the time, whether it's a busser coming up to serve water or a host or a server going to take an order. But guests always ask, what did you do to get in here? <laughs> and our kids, with a smile on their face, the ability to make eye contact, keeping their chin up, keeping their chest out, can respond and say, I made a mistake. And that is so incredibly humbling to me because as an adult woman, it is hard for me to admit when I have made a mistake. And I encourage you to think about the last time you admitted in front of a group of strangers that you made a mistake and you're looking for a second chance. And a lot of times those mistakes are tied to the darkest times in someone's life and terrible memories. And it humbles me to my core that our kids can actually own that, accept that, and move on and say it with pride. That's all I have to say about that <laughs> before I start crying. I was gonna bring up Angelica so that you can meet one of our kids and see how incredible they are. Yeah. Can we get a round of applause for Katie and Angelica? welcome your questions throughout so just kind of indicate to Paige when you have something and we only have the one mic so we'll be sharing it up here and if you can just call it out as best you can thank you okay 
just to preface, this is Angelica, and she is about to teach you some things about life, I have a feeling. <laughs> okay, so Angelica, my first question is, what does courage mean to you? Courage means to me, courage means to me like the ability to overcome like a fear, any type of fear that you may have. Where did that come from? Did someone teach that to you, or did you learn that yourself? I feel like I learned that myself, like throughout all the stuff that's been happening to me, like I learned that myself. I've been having to learn like ever since I came to cafe like I didn't thought I could like actually come in and like cook and do all this stuff I couldn't do and also like now that I'm pregnant like I feel like with like with like me going to school coming to work while I'm pregnant I feel like that's something that I never thought I could do too like it's just been that little type of stuff that like like teaches me more of me like like challenges to me that I feel like I could never do, but then I overcome. So what's your biggest takeaway from your experiences at Cafe Momentum? I feel like um, my skills, like the skills they teach me right here, that's my biggest takeaway. And also like when we do family meal and we gathered up with everybody, like I be like when they be teaching us about like who are your real friends and who are not? Like, I feel like I've been, I learned so much about who I can count on and who I can't count on. Like, as so far as my friends, like right now that I'm pregnant, like I feel like I lost a lot of friends. Like, friends that I thought that were my friends before, they were really just hanging out with me just to do stuff. And now, now that I can't do that certain stuff, now that I can't, like, smoke or I can't drink or nothing, have fun, go to parties. They don't hang out with me no more. So it's just like me by myself. Like, and I just gotta focus right now on doing it, everything I can for my baby. So when it arrives, I can set like a good example for my baby. That segue is perfect to my next question because I was gonna ask her, is how does it feel to be working towards a goal and to be doing, knowing that you're doing well for yourself when you know that a lot of your friends or other peers are not doing the same. I mean, to me, that's like a good thing to me, you know, because at the end of the day, I don't, I'm only gonna have myself, like, that people that I used to hang out with, like, they're gonna be still at the same place, like, they're gonna be still in the hood, doing the same thing they were doing, and probably end up in a worse situation than, I, I think that I was gonna end up on, right now, like I'm working, I'm trying to go to school, I'm trying to get my credits done since I was behind and stuff. I'm trying to like graduate. So I feel like, like, listening myself from that, other people has been good to me. Like it's doing better for me. Like I'd rather be alone than be with a bunch of people that's gonna stay in the same situation. And I'd rather not be stuck in that same moment. Like, I just wanna be some, somebody in life. That's what I feel like. I just want to share something real quick about Angelica. Yesterday, actually this week, we were contacted by a nonprofit called Council for a Stronger America, and they wanted to do a training between youth and police officers to help better understand each other. And Angelica showed up the entire week. She was here at eight o'clock yesterday morning and worked with police officers on how to better interact. She did role plays with police officers on how to understand each other better. She got to pretend to be an officer, the officer got to pretend to be her. And let me just say that is not an easy feat for probably any teenager, but especially teenagers that have been in trouble before. You have an idea of what police officers are and I'm just so proud of her for putting herself out there to be open to listening to somebody else's point of view. I want to see if anybody has a question. Um, what are your goals? How are they different from before you came to Captain Momentum and now after? Okay, 
So she asked, what are your goals before you came to Cafe Momentum? What were they before? And then what are they now? I feel like I didn't have many goals before. Like before I came to Cafe, I didn't really focus on goals until like Paige told me, they, they teach me about doing my goals. But I really never before had a goal. I didn't have a goal to go to school. To me, it was like, I don't even care about school. I don't care about nothing. I'm young, I'm doing whatever I want to do. I'm having fun. And it was all about coming to work, getting my money. That's it, I'm getting my money. I don't care about nothing else, spending my money. I didn't have no goals like for life or like for like the, like farther in life. Like now I have goals like going to school, getting my diploma, graduating, to set a good example for my baby, working, um, saving up my money actually now. I save up my money, got my bank account, and I'm trying to just like have a better life in the future. I don't think about, like I think about, I take, I take it every day at a time. Like my goals right now are for me better in the future. I feel like to be somebody like, what I want to be when I grow up is like a psychologist. I want to be a psychologist. I, I want to help um, other girls with eating disorders. So that's my dream goal. Like going to school, being a psychologist and Setting a good example. What is the best thing that older adults like myself can do for young people who are in trouble? And what is the worst thing? I feel like the best thing people could do is opening doors, like mm, believing in us more. Just because, like, giving us second chances, like Cafe Momentum, like how they open their doors without even knowing us or without even knowing, like, why are they coming here? Are they going to even work every day? They're going to show up, like, opening our doors and just believing in us. And like, the worst thing that people could do is just not giving somebody else a second chance. Does anybody else have another question? What do, the, what do the kids do generally after the 12-year internship? So they've been here, they've learned skills, they've learned work skills and life skills, but then what's next? So do you help them find other jobs or do you have connections in the community? Like, where do they go after here? Yeah, so we have, it's called an externship program and that starts about month nine, give or take. And we have employment partners, so we actually transition them into another job where they will continue to work part-time at Cafe Momentum and part-time at their externship. The externship contract is for 90 days in the hopes that the youth gets hired on full-time. And then we, we really never stop job placement services. You know, if that job doesn't work out, we'll try something else. Even for the kids that maybe don't make it all the way through the program or they come back a year later, we will always assist them with job placement. Are those all food service industry jobs? Or what types of holes do they come into? Like what kind of businesses are you partnering with? I don't know if y'all heard that in the back, but she asked what kinds of roles are they going into. The majority are food service. We work with the Jewel Hotel really closely, and that's kind of our biggest employment partner. So they work in the restaurants there. But every once in a while, one of the youth just really is not interested in staying in the restaurant business. So we work with our connections and a network to figure out whatever it is that they can do or find them an internship to maybe try something else out before they actually commit. The ages of the youth that you work with? The ages of the youth are 15 to 19. How does youth in general find Cafe Momentum? Is it like word of mouth or how do you guys do that? So the youth find us in several ways. A lot of it is word of mouth. A lot of our kids actually come back through the program. We have an orientation process where if they get released for any reason, they didn't want to follow rules or they're not completing the requirements, they can start back over. But we also have um, connections with the PO off like offices. So we go to meetings once a month and we present to all of the juvenile PO officers in Dallas County to help with referrals. We're also allowed into some of the facilities, some of the detention facilities to work with the probation officers that are in facility and also work with the youth. And like the pop-up dinners where we had kids you know, come in, they're released, they actually get to do that here. 
So once a month, eight kids from the Dallas County Youth Village, they come into Cafe Momentum and shadow with our own kids. Oh, and also from schools. We work closely with a lot of the Dallas Camp Academies. And I was curious, um, what was your name again? Angelica. Angelica? Yeah, how did you personally hear about it? Um, I heard about it because I had a I had a homeboy that used to work here. Um, he, I think he was one of the first graduates. It was Happy Sai. He had worked here and he had told me about it. He had told my brother about it, and I was already interested on the job since I was I was 15 and I came up here and I had asked about the job. But at that moment, I think they wasn't doing girls. They were about to do girls, and then that's when I met Tori and she had told me to come. Once I was I don't know if it was like she said come like in form like. In a couple of months, she gave me a form. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna come. So I was already interested on the job. And I told him, since I was in probation, I had told my PO, I had told him about the job. I was like, I wanna work in this place. Like, he never even told me about the job. Like, I just told him I wanna work here. He was like, oh yeah, I've heard about it. He's like, okay, let me talk about it. I'm like, okay, so he gave, I gave him time and everything. That's when I came up here and asked, like, when was orientation? They told me about it. And he set me up so I could come here too. So he has spoke, he has spoke with one of my case managers, Tori, and that's how I came here. 